First off, I would like to thank you all for taking the time to join me today, and I really hope this webinar will be worth your while. I'm Nadi Laimoud, a dentist by profession and analyst by passion. I have been performing daily Elliott Wave analysis for the past six years, and I have been a contributor for Elliott for FX Street for almost two years. When I started preparing this webinar, I did not I did not mean for it to replace reading any of the great trading psychology books out there in the market. Rather, I wanted to provide a practical guide to master these concepts illustrated in these books. Also, I started with the intent to only focus on trading psychology. But the further I went with preparations, I found that this webinar would not be complete without touching on the subject of money management. So toward, toward the ends of this webinar, we will go through the basics of money management and the most common misconceptions that money management can limit our success and profits. In this webinar, I'm going to assume that you have a working technical system. If you did not yet develop a system that has proved to be profitable, you can always subscribe to an online profitable service. Of course, I will not be able to suggest a service because I would be biased toward the service we provide, and that is not why we are all here today. So, let's start by going through what we will be discussing on this webinar. The first two topics are trading pillars and bad psychology behaviors. These, this, these two topics will serve as a base to familiarize ourselves with what we need to be aware of for our trading to be successful and to understand some of the behavior that can inhibit our success as traders. Afterwards, we will delve into the six practical steps we need to overcome our psychological barriers. You will find that these steps are easy to understand and remember later on, but following these steps or rules is a different story. These steps are presented in a specific order with a novice trader in mind supporting him as he advances through his trading career to become a consistent, profitable trader. Trading is based on three pillars that, in order to be successful, we have to address each and every one of them. Technical analysis system, money management, and trading psychology. According to great authors and traders like, like Mark Douglas, Van Thorpe, Etsy Kota, and Tom Passo, Technical analysis systems are not the best are not the most important factor. Actually, it's suggested that training psychology account for 60% of successful trading, while money management accounts for 30%, and finally technical analysis systems accounting for 10%. I know it's very hard to accept that technical analysis can only account for 10%. But let's think about it. We all know that 95% of traders lose in the forex market. Well, if trading is based on 60% trading psychology and 30% money management, let's think about it. Out of the 10% assigned for technical analysis, almost half, if not more, of forex traders does not have a good understanding of technical analysis systems, nor have they developed a good technical analysis system. So half of 10%, that leaves us with only 5%. Let's add the 60% for, for trading psychology, 30% for money management, and 5% for technical analysis. I guess we now know why 95% fail at Forex trading. Even with that in mind, it's still hard to accept these numbers. But the reality is, these numbers are not what counts. Even if trading psychology and money management account for only 25% of our success instead of 90, we still should seek improvement to master these concepts. Just imagine how profitable your capital would be with just 25% increase in your success rate. To be able to reach such success rate, we first need to focus on the psychological aspect of trading. To start, we have to identify the problems in our trading that originates from our, psycholog uh, our, from our psychological problems. The following mistakes are the mistakes that I made or those mistakes that I have witnessed other traders perform firsthand. I think we all can relate to at least one point of the following. The first point, keeping a losing trade just to lessen our losses or prove ourselves right. I 
I think we've all done that in one, one time or another. The next point is being carelessness of, be, of being careless after a series of, way, of winning trades. The, th the third point, placing a target based on what we want from the market, not what the market is willing to give us. Just like by specifying that we need, for example, 40 peps from the market for any given trade, and the very important thing here that we should never expect to win a fixed number of peps for every trade. Every trade is unique, and therefore we should calculate profit accordingly. Revenge trading. When we enter the market to compensate for the last losing trade, if we lost 30 peps in the last trade, it would not be enough for us to win 50 peps on this trade. We want to wait until we gain 30 peps just to feel satisfied that the market did not take money from us. Failing, failing to enter a trade because of hesitation and not trusting our systems, ignoring the rules that we specified are two points that constitute a bad psychological pattern. When in a losing trade, we look for indicators or friends or even financial experts just to prove ourselves right to feel assured that if a loss happened, we will not be the only one losing if, if then happened. Being afraid of missing out an opportunity, so we jump in without preparation. If we can relate to any of these bad psychological patterns, this, then these practical steps we are going to discuss now will really help us improve our success rate. As I mentioned at the beginning of this webinar, these steps are easy to understand, but quite hard to follow. We will be discussing six steps, which are divided into three sections. The first section is about protection. Since that should be our first priority as we start trading, it's not the market we should protect ourselves from. We should protect ourselves from ourselves, our own bad behavior. When we get that done, we will move to the next section, which is concerned with maintaining that success we achieve. The last section is about evolving and improving our performance to gain even further success. The first step is set our goals. I guess it's no mystery that we are all trading for one goal, making money. I believe we agree all about this point, right? Making sure that we have what it takes to start trading the profitable way. What, what we need to make consistent money trading and notice that I said consistent. Making money by winning a trade is not that hard, actually. I doubt that any of us failed to encounter a winning trade when we started trading. If we did not encounter that trade, I do not think we would be all here today. Because that winning trade is what convinced us all that trading for living is achievable and can be done. However, winning on a consistent level needs a certain set of skills that we are going to talk about in a while. So as we mentioned, there are three trading pillars. If we fail, if we fail to pay closer attention to every single one of them, we are doomed to fail. So back to setting our goals. To break it down into a simpler and smaller goals, we have to think about first technical analysis system. Are we familiar with the ins and outs of our system do we know how that system behaves in different market conditions? If not, then just let me know if the audio was not okay. If we don't know the ins and outs of our technical analysis system, that should be our first priority. That should be our first goal to set to master that technical analysis system. Moving forward to money management. Do we have a money management system that can help us first to preserve our capital and then to help us prosper? Is that system simple? Is that easy to work with? Or that needs time for us to master and understand completely? When we get all these points checked, it's time to face the trading psychology part of trading, which we will address shortly. We all heard that demo trading, we all heard that demo trading, <laughs> or even paper trading is very different from real trading when we are trading our real money. 
So what is the difference between demo trading and real trading? Actually, when you think about it, the only difference between both is just our psychology. How, how we become discomfort, how we feel, we're feeling pain when we are wrong. And lastly, how we are nervous placing a trade and how we hesitate when we do that. We have to be psychologically prepared to whatever the market is throwing at us. We do not have the luxury to be caught off guard when our financial safety is on the line. Now that we have that step out of the way, let's move on to the next step where we will start exploring how our minds can trick us when trading and how to practically prepare ourselves for it. Well, since this is a practical guide, I think the best course of action is to get our feet wet and go through a paper trade and see how our minds and emotions can trick us while we are trading. Let's take a look at this chart with support and resistance levels. We always have to start by preparing for a trade. There is no room for emotions or gut feeling when we are trading. According, looking at this, at this chart, do you guys think we should buy the market or we should sell the market from this level? Any takers? Well, Daniel, you're really right. The, the trend here is up, is showing up, and the, the safest course of action is to buy the market. So, so, according to that system, based on support and resistance level, we decide that we should buy the market since the trend is clearly bullish. And so, we will buy from the support level closest to price. just around here now what we need to focus on now is where to take our profit the difference between green and red is that green so represent the resistance levels and the red represents the support levels so the next logical thing is to prepare our take profit point so we will put our take, take profit point at the next resistance level at the second green line first off let's agree on a very important point risk so far we decided where to enter the market and where we will take our profit the only thing missing is where we will exit the market if that trade went against us. We need a stop loss point, a point when with it turns our analysis invalid. Defining risk is essential, just as much as defining a take profit point. No matter how advanced we become as traders, we will always encounter a losing trade. Therefore, we have to calculate what we can accept as loss if that trade fails. So, any suggestions for the placement of that stop loss point? But we were wise enough to draw that trend line, which proved that it can provide support as we expected. Trend line keeps providing, providing the support we need, but we are starting to get a little bit uncomfortable because the market is trading near the trend line but it's yet to move up. We decide to let the market take its time. After all, that trend line is well above the support level we plan on using as a stop loss. Now, news comes out and the market moves sharply below the stop loss point we planned. We start to feel discomfort. And if we were over leveraged, then we will start to feel pain and panic. At this stage, we decide that it's time to review our situation and either perform reanalysis of the market, maybe consult our friends, or consult a different indicator that we are not familiar with. 
We keep telling ourselves that we are objective and we are doing the reanalysis to see if there is any possibility for the market to continue moving up. Even though trend is clearly down, we can come up with countless reasons to stay in this trade. We keep telling ourselves that the market will eventually move up, even if just for a correction. We tell ourselves that I just have to hold on to this trade long enough for it to come around. So, we draw a trend line which provided support before. This downwards correction seems deep, we tell ourselves, but no doubt it will reverse from that trend line. We go back to our trading map. We go back to our trading terminal and push the stop loss lower below the next support level down here. The thing is, this psychological pattern will keep repeating on and on until losses start to accumulate. And at this, po and, and at this point, it becomes much easier for us emotionally to admit being wrong than suffer any more losses. Now, to know how to avoid falling for this behavior, we have to understand what we did wrong in that trade. Basically, well, I will get to that point about entry. Mm, FX Poiki. Sorry if I, if I spelled that wrong. So what we did wrong with that trade? Basically, we did two mistakes here. We did not follow our system and we did not accept risk. We ended up losing way more than we identified as acceptable. For example, if we accepted to risk 4% of our capital on that trade by exiting the market from the first support level, we ended up losing way more than 12% by exiting the market from the second support level. But when we think about it, if we risk 4% of our account on that trade, we will be following sound money management rules. If we did not follow if we did not follow sound money management rules, then we would be in a much bigger problem. Cut your losses short. We hear that phrase a lot. But personally, when I first heard, heard it, I did not understand how to. I did not understand if I should stop a trade, if it went few pips against me or not. If we have developed a system, we know before entering the market and placing our order, that if a certain point was reached, then the probabilities are that the market will not move in our direction. If or when that point is reached, we exit the market without hesitation. Few of us set this stop loss point when we are starting a trade. But when we enter the trade and the trade is in action, we decide to ignore that point and start looking for reasons to justify we are still in the market. We forget that it's very hard to think rationally when we are invested both emotionally and financially in the market. So most often than not, if re every time you resort to this type of thinking, you will lose. Stick to your, st stick to your stop loss point that you prepared before you enter the market. Because even though you will end up losing this trade, the system you developed will even out that loss and then some. So what are the rules for using stop loss points? Before entry, we have to identify where to place our stop loss point. At this stage, we are more than welcome to change the location of that stop loss, uh, that stop loss point as we see fit. It doesn't matter how we change that as long as we are objective, as long as we are thinking clearly. The third point before we enter the market is that we should never use mental stop loss. A mental stop loss is when you specify in your mind where you will exit the market. 
that wouldn't be specific and at times and at times with volatility in the market you would not be able to execute your trade or or, or get out of that trade fast enough after we ex after we enter the market and the trade is in action we should never change the stop loss location unless it's in our direction if we are using trailing stop loss to protect our profit So to remind ourselves, the first step is to set our goals, to break it down to simple and e easier goals. The second step is to use a stop loss point to protect ourselves. The other mistake we fall for in that trade is that we entered the trade at market price. Generally, Entering a trade at market price and not placing a market order might not be wrong. But as we mentioned, we have to protect ourselves. We have to make sure that we will not enter a giving trade based on a whim or an impulse without proper preparation for that trade. When we are scanning the market for opportunities, we are always looking for the next big trade that will secure our capital. So as a result, our mind assumes that the next opportunity our mind assumes that the next opportunity is that big trade. Motivated by the fear of missing the big opportunity, we usually rush into the market, forgetting that the market will not stop providing us with signals to enter the market on a daily basis. To get rid of that behavior, we have to think on two levels, the mental and the practical levels. On the mental level, we have to accept the fact that we are not in the market to take advantage of every swing. Eventually, we will miss some. If we thought that we are after every up and down move, then more likely we will suffer from being wrong a lot. In turn, psychologically, we will want to get rid of that discomfort and pain of being wrong, to get that satisfaction and relief of being right. So we decide to enter the market even, even if that decision at the time was irrational and not objective, and that is the basis of revenge trading. We should act like predators. We wait and wait for the right moment. When that confirmation is met, we jump in without hesitation, take what we want from the market and leave and let the market do what it has to do. On a practical level, we should use confirmation points to time our entry. If we use the last trade as an example, we would not enter the market unless we have, let's say, a MACD divergence, for example, that supports and confirms that system. There are really few rules for confirmation studies. The first point is that a confirmation point is used as an entry point. We place a market order, instead of entering the market instead of entering a trade at a market price that confirmation study should be simple because a complicated confirmation system would take a lot of preparation time and might delay our entry and that will result in less profit confirmation study and our technical system should not be of the same type meaning that if the technical system we use depends on a lagging indicator like a MACD or a Bollinger Band, then confirmation should be based on a different type of an oscillator or maybe Elliott waves or even Japanese candlesticks. Now we, fi we are finished with three steps, setting our goals, using stop loss points and using confirmation points. Step number four, Back when I was in a pre-med school, I was told a story. The story says that six blind men were asked to, to determine what an elephant looked like by feeling different parts of the elephant's body. The first man, the first man feels the elephant's tail and says the elephant is like a rope. The second man feels the elephant's tusk and says the elephant is like a spear. Third man feels the elephant's trunk and says the elephant is like a snake. The fourth man feels the elephant's leg and says the elephant is like a tree. 
the fifth man feels the elephant ears and say the elephant is like a fan and lastly the sixth man the sixth man feels the elephant belly and says the fan is like the elephant is like a wall mm, let me check if you can hear me guys great what i was saying is that we as traders are just like these blind men we assume with 100% certainty that the market is going up or down just like the man who felt the elephant's tail and said the elephant is like a rope we forget that we are only viewing the market from our own perspective we can never see the whole picture so we have to accept that our view or bias is limited and can be wrong therefore we have to accept the uncertainty of the market and always be prepared with a backup plan an alternate route in case the market behaves in an unexpected manner what are the benefits of using an alternate route the first the first benefit is that it forces objectivity when you ask yourself what if the market moves the first the first thing you and you ask yourself if the market moves in in the other direction you will notice that immediately you will be able to see that the market is behaving in a new light at times you will be able to see clues supporting that the market can move in the opposite direction of what you previously expected and this force you to reanalyze the market and maybe enter the the trade on the other side the second point is that it decreases the psychological tension because we let the market lead and we follow if the market moves above a certain point we buy if the market moves below a certain confirmation point we sell we effectively decrease the discomfort and pain of being wrong by preparing a backup plan we have to keep in mind that we will not be able to eliminate the fe that feeling but we are decreasing it significantly and even that and, and and that even improves with practice increase risk awareness new traders fail to acknowledge the risk and stop loss placement because they believe that the market is going to unfold as they expected by using alternate we become aware of the possibility of losing any given trade and that helps us calculate our our risk effectively now we will move to step 5 once we master the past steps we will be on our way to financial stability and we will notice an attitude change toward the market and how better we become at trading now the game changes and also our psychological behavior so we have to prepare for that change of input we bring to the to the market and our trading the three most common negative attitudes that threaten our trading success at this stage are unworthiness especially if we feel that we do not deserve that success boredom and restlessness as trading becomes a routine and finally overconfidence <laughs> we will get to that in a while osman the good news is that we cannot experience all of these negative attitudes at the same time okay first of all let me answer your question we decrease the psychological tension because the psychological tension is basically based on feeling the, being afraid of being wrong so if we say the market is going up we pray and hope god for from god that the market is going in our direction that creates the psychological tension by using alternates it wouldn't matter really if the market goes up or goes down we are prepared either way so that would decrease the psychological tension each of us will be able to relate to only one of these three negative attitudes but never all of them unworthiness leading to self sabotage or carelessness when we assume that we are not worthy of that success we have or when we think that we are generating too much profit too much too quickly for our own good that attitude should be addressed with care we should keep reminding ourselves how hard we worked to reach this stage treating the symptoms of self sabotage takes a lot of efforts and unfortunately it's beyond the scope of this webinar 
boredom and restlessness would force us to enter more trade just to feel the thrill of trading, to be in action. And needless to be said, most trades that are based on impulse or whim will hurt our capital and it will jeopardize the effort we've been exerting so far to become disciplined and successful traders. On the other hand, overconfidence gives us the illusion that we are unbeatable and that we are in control of the market. Truth is, unless we have billions of dollars, we are not in control of a huge market such as the Forex market. The market is in control. All we can do is try to interpret that control and follow it. We can fix these, issue, these issues with the right mindset. When we understand that we are succeeding because we, because we worked hard and we will only keep that success if we kept exerting the same amount of effort and any less of that effort and we will fail to keep up that success. So to remind ourselves in a practical terms and keep ourselves in check, we have to do consistent withdrawals. Withdrawals act as a reward. We set aside a certain percent of our profit let's say 10% to withdraw on a monthly basis and spend that money on whatever hobby we fancy but never got the courage to pull. Better yet, if we had a hobby but did not have the time for it before, now is the time to fulfill that hobby. While trading, you only need your complete focus when you are preparing your trade, setting your stop loss, entry and take profit points. But once the trade is in action, you should only be passively monitoring that trade. It really is advisable to set the sound to set the sound alarm of your trading application to notify you on key levels and find something else to occupy your time with. Some traders prefer to watch movies during trading hours. Some others try doing their chores. And I know a trader who prefers to do carpentry. Withdrawals will keep us focused and aware of our goals when we need it more. Withdrawals keep us focused and aware of our goals when we need it most. And also, the other important psychological factor is that if we think that our capital has grown too much too quickly and we become worried with every single trade, that deduction of profit from the capital will create the needed psychological effect to protect ourselves. Getting the past five steps right practically ensures that the curve will positively, will positively shift in our favor and in turn increase the value of our trading and success. What we will notice in regards to our trading curve as time goes by is that we reach a plateau. At this stage, we already reached our destination, consistent profit. But every system can be improved. It is in our nature to look for perfection. We cannot achieve that perfection, but we can always improve and evolve. If we have a success rate of 70%, we can improve that to 75%. If it is an 80%, we can improve that to an 85% and so on. If we find that a certain psychological point is taking its toll on us and it takes lots of our energy just to address that point, we can dedicate time to solve that issue. A very important point to keep in mind is to only start the stage when you reach consistent success and when the curve reaches a plateau, be very cautious that if you start this stage early, it might mess up your trading success. So basically, we need to keep three points in mind to improve the quality of our trading. The first point is that we have to be able to monitor our reaction when trading. We have to become aware of our behavior. This is a key point to success as a trader, to be able to identify that we have a problem in the first place like noticing if we become overconfident while trading, or if we pay less attention to having alternate routes, or even if we fail to acknowledge risk at certain times. The reason why this is so important is because these steps will help us remedy bad psychological behavior. But to be able to do it, we have first to identify that we have a problem. Once we acknowledge the problem, we already are halfway through to solving it for good. Once we are done monitoring our behavior, we have to review our technical system and make sure they are performing as they should. Lastly, we should, we should improve our systems and evolve them. 
We have plenty of options on how we can monitor ourselves objectively. That includes, but are not limited to, video blog. With the abundance of smartphones and video technology around us, it's not that hard to record a one minute or a two minutes video before every trade. Listing the reasons why we entered that trade. If that trade went wrong, we examined the cause behind it. Did we do our best and this trade is simply a byproduct of, tra of trading or, we, or did we ignore a rule we set? Keep a written journal or better yet, have a trading partner. You can both discuss your trades either before or after placing them, but you should keep in mind one simple rule here. Keep your trading details private from those who do not understand trading. It's hard from any, for anyone from outside the trading world to understand why you lost a trade. The simple idea that loss is part of trading is quite foreign to them. At the first stages, a comment of that sort might affect our confidence and self-esteem in regards to trading. But by all means, never hide any data from your trading partner. Consult a trading psychology expert you trust who can help you identify and solve your specific problem. That was how we can monitor our behavior while trading. And let's move on to reviewing our trading system. <coughs> Excuse me. Trading system review should be performed periodically at the end of, trading, of each trading month for, month, for example. We sit down and calculate the success rate of that system. We, we analyze what went wrong, and we start to think of how we can improve that success rate. It has to be objective with no bias. We should never start questioning our system or even reviewing it after a losing single trade. As stated in Roll 1, it has to be done periodically to provide any meaningful results. Lastly, we should always keep these records to view how improved the system has become over a certain, a certain period. Now we move to the last step, which is system improvement. The first and most important tool is reading. That is how we will learn about new exciting tools that can help us improve our system. Second rule is having a small trading capital for testing or even a demo account to experiment with our system add new confirmation methods, experiment with, the, with technical indicators we are not familiar with. What we have to keep in mind here is that this account is considered a beta testing ground. We don't perform these tests on our main account. Our main account will be only traded with our proved and tested systems and rules. Now let's move on. We finished the six steps and, and we will move on now to Elliott Wave Psychology. Hopefully we will have enough time to go up, to go through money management, but if we didn't, mm, too bad. Are we all familiar with that type of technical analysis? Basically, it's an advanced form of technical analysis developed by Ralph Nelson Elliott in the 1930s. It states that the market moves in waves or steps. In an uptrend, we see five waves or steps toward the upside, followed by a correction that unfolds in three steps toward the downside. That is the basic notion of Elliott wave analysis, with only three rules to determine if the analysis is valid or not. I think we all agree that the bottom line of every trading psychology book in the market is know yourself. Uh, if we all agree, if we all agree that I should jump to money management, I wouldn't mind. Start with two of the most common misconceptions in regards to money management. The first one, I have a $10,000 account. To follow proper money management rules, I would have to trade with 10% of my account. Therefore, I can only open one standard lot per trade, right? Actually, actually, no. Money management is calculated per trade, not per capital. And to top that, 
10% is not considered proper money management. Money management experts would say that you can only risk 2 to 3% of your capital. And I will go on a limb here and say 4%. So with $10,000 account, you can open a four lots trade if your stop loss is 10 pips away. And two lots trade if your stop loss is two, is 20 pips away. That leads, uh, that leads us to the second most common misconce miscon misconception about money management, which is, wait a minute. I can only risk 4% of my capital, but if I risk 4% of my capital, I will not be able to gain as much, and it will take forever to just even double my account. Actually, trading with proper money management techniques can result in more profit in both short and long term, and we will go through a practical example to see how that can be achieved. I will do my best to cover two of the basics concepts of the money man about money management. First, risk reward ratio and per trade application of money management. This by no means is a replacement for reading a book about money management or even consulting an expert or reading a trustworthy online article about it. The first concept is risk reward ratio. This is the ratio between what we are willing to risk divided what we are willing to gain. That result should never be higher than one and preferably Five. Let's go through a quick example here to see what that means. If we are entering a trade expecting to lose a $20, then the least amount we should expect to profit is $20. If that trade suggests that we will win or gain less than $20, then we should not enter that trade from the first place. As I said, preferably it's to, to be 0.5 risk reward ratio this means that if we are entering the market with a risk of $20 that we expect from that trade to gain $40 double the amount we risk now we will go to per trade application per trade application provides a method to calculate lot size according to money management rules given the acceptance of 4% risk or lower of capital per trade it's calculated as following lot size equal risk in US dollars. So we understand that if we have a $10,000 account, we, ha we have to risk 4% of that, which means $400. So we divide $400, $400 by the risk in PEPS. We will go through an example shortly to explain that in detail. But let's bear with me with that equation. Let's go to the example. That analysis was published almost one week ago on Tuesday morning before London's session. The setup is really simple. Confirmation is used as entry, invalidation as stop loss, and target is where we take profit. Most often than not, I inform members. All right then, I guess we have to wrap up here and we might continue later on. I'm sorry about that, guys. I really needed the, I really wanted the time to have some questions afterwards, but obviously we don't have that luxury. I really hope so. If, if that's in demand, I would be. Thank you, everyone, for being really, really great audience. I really hope to see you soon, and good luck with your trading. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.